Hey everybody, hope you've had a great day today. Just want to say thank you. We've hit 16,400 subscribers. It's really above and beyond any place I ever thought this channel would be. So thank you guys so much. Next, don't forget, you can join the channel now for just 99 cents. At the beginning of next year, the MVP, VIP, and Pro will all disappear and all those perks will transfer to the eBuzz Central member. 99 cents, good way to support the channel you like and good way, an affordable way to support the content you like. On my channel, I cover a lot of different distros. I've changed daily drivers. I try to change them once a month. And sometimes when I do videos, they get lost in the shuffle. What I'm doing today is I'm going to revisit some content with Gecko Linux. This is going to show you how you download it, install it, and of course, add all the applications that you want to use and just how easy it is to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to zip on over to Gecko Linux's website. Now you guys are probably wondering, what is Gecko Linux? Or some of you old heads out there know what Gecko Linux is. Gecko Linux is based on OpenSUSE, which in and of itself is a great operating system. Now one of the reasons I'm not going with OpenSUSE is one of the reasons that I don't go with just a vanilla arch when I use it. I have so many things going on work-wise. Like this week I'm finishing up three different contracts for putting networking systems in running ethernet cable. I've got a maybe an hour and a half, two hours a day to actually put into my YouTube channel. And then I've got to be doing my marketing business on top of that. I need something that's going to be very easy to use and very easy for me to get around in. I don't have a lot of time right now to tinker. So that's one of the reasons I chose Gecko, which is based on OpenSUSE, which is also based on just plain SUSE, which actually just turned 30 years old. That's right, everybody. SUSE has been around since 1992. They're more into the enterprise side of Linux. You can actually go over here and look at free downloads, and everything that SUSE offers is enterprise. You can buy, download, you can test it out, but we're going to get off of that. SUSE's been around forever. They've been a rock-stable operating system in the Linux community for enterprise for a long time. So one of the reasons I chose Gecko, like I said earlier, it's a set of Linux spins that is built from the OpenSUSE distribution with a focus on polish and out-of-the-box usability on the desktop. It's available in static, which would be a lot like your Leap, which is just a solid distribution. It's not a rolling. And it comes in a rolling based on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. And they give you quite a few options here. You can get it in different desktops. Right here is your static versions. You can get a static in Cinnamon, XFCE, Gnome, Plasma, Bare Bones, LXQT, Budgie, or Mate. And your rolling release you can get on those same desktop environments. Now, if you come down here, you do have what's called Gecko Linux Next Editions, which is a stable OpenSUSE Leap base combined with additional OBS repositories to offer the latest version of popular desktop environments. So you get a solid base distribution that's not a rolling release, but then you get the most up-to-date desktop environments. And that's available in the KDE Plasma and in the Pantheon, which is what you're used to seeing with the elementary OS. Now, what I'm doing today is I'm kind of giving you all a 50-50. I'm going to stay with KDE because I'm comfortable with that desktop environment and then go with the Gecko Linux rolling release. Now to download it, you just click on download. It'll open up SourceForge. I know what you all are gonna say. SourceForge, it's gonna take forever to download. Only took me about 20, 25 minutes to download it. And it says, thank you for downloading Gecko Linux. I already have it downloaded. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire it up into a virtual machine so you can kind of see the first steps of the install process. In doing that, I'm able to show it to you on screen. And then I'm going to install it on my hardware, download OBS, and finish the video from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to zip on over to the Gecko Linux desktop right now. And when you download it, boot into it, you're going to come to this screen right here. Now, what I do want to say is if you download this and you, you take it for a test drive and you do want to use it, please don't forget to take a USB, back up all your pictures, your documents, your downloads, whatever data you want to save and not lose make sure you back that up. Now, it did come with a different background. It came with just a green background out of the box. That's what it comes with. Now, I wanted to change it because I do like the OpenSUSE background for some reason. I just like the way it looks. And what you're gonna wanna do is first off, before you do anything, make sure your volume works, 
make sure you can turn it up and down your microphone it's showing make sure all of your hardware works make sure if you've got printers you can get those to run make sure that uh, you're not having any problems with your hard drives go ahead and go double check make sure that they're reading correctly making sure they say they have the right amount of space and things like that and once you've done that you're ready to go you're ready to actually install it now it uses the calamari's installer wait just a second i'm getting ahead of myself another thing you need to do is come down here and what you're going to want to do is go to software let's look up software and you're going to have the yast software you've got the software software management and software repositories I'm going to go ahead and open up the software repositories because I want to show you out of the box exactly what OpenSUSE has in their software repositories. Now, you're going to have Pac-Man Tumbleweed. Don't get that confused with Pac-Man on Arch. It's P-A-C-K-M-A-N. Now, it has some of your AUR type packages that you can get on OpenSUSE or Gecko Linux. And just to let you know, I'm going to start calling it Gecko because that's what I'm using. Then you've got your Tumbleweed updates, Tumbleweed OSS. You've got a specific repository if you're somebody that wants to use Google Chrome. NVIDIA, you have the NVIDIA repository. So that way, if you're using an NVIDIA video card in your desktop or in your laptop, you can get those drivers to work flawlessly on Gecko Linux. And then you've got Skype Stable. So that's all your repositories. Now, another thing you're going to want to do is come back down here and double check, go to software. And we're going to go ahead and go to software and we're going to open that up. And there's another thing I need you to do. You have an idea in your mind of what applications you're using. You want to make sure those applications are available on Gecko Linux. So once that updates, it's going to come up. And this is a lot like uh, Synaptic Package Manager. If you're familiar with that, it's just one of those type search and find. So one of the things I want to make sure they have is OBS Studio. So we'll go OBS Studio. They do have OBS Studio. Let's see if they've got Caden Live, which I'm sure they do because it's a KDE. Then you've got GIMP. Let's go ahead and do a search on that. There's GIMP right there. Krita. Uh, so you just want to make sure that all the software you're presently using is available on Gecko Linux. Let's see if they got Shotcut. No, they do have Shotcut as well. So they seem to have all the software that I might need or may use in the future. So let's go to the Calamari's installer. Let's double click on that. And I'm not going to go in too in depth on this because most of you are probably familiar with the Calamari's installer. And you'll see right here, there are no partitions to install on. That's because I'm in a virtual machine. But this is your base Calamari's install. If you've installed Ubuntu, if you've installed Linux Mint, if you installed Manjaro, if you installed pretty much any Linux distro out there other than Fedora because I hate their install program. This is pretty self-explanatory. You go to welcome, location, keyboard, setting up your partitions. All I ever do is just say erase the whole disk and let's start afresh. Some of y'all may do that a little differently. If you do, you can go to their FAQ section and I'm sure they'll explain how to do that. Set up your user info, summary, and then install. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and get this installed on my hardware and then continue the video from inside my fresh install of Gecko Linux. Okay, everybody, um, downloaded it, installed it. I'm on hardware and no issues at all. Matter of fact, it's probably the fastest install I've ever had uh, with any Linux distro I've ever used. I wanted to say it was Fedora here about uh, three or four months ago, but this one just blew it out of the water. It took maybe three and a half minutes and I'm not using amazing hardware. I'm using an i5 with eight gigabytes of RAM. Like I said, it's a ThinkPad, uh, but it's installed. The only thing that I have installed is OBS, just so I could record here. And hopefully I've got my settings okay, and hopefully the audio doesn't suck too bad. But once you install it, this is what you're gonna be met with. And quite honestly, the only thing I've changed is the wallpaper. Now, I do want to go over and take a real quick look at console because I want to see what kind of resources we are using after it is installed. And right now, it shows about 1.7 gigabytes being used at rest. So what I'm going to see is see how that goes in conjunction with system monitor. There is system monitor, and system monitor is probably going to show a couple gigs. No, 1.8 gigabytes. 
Now this is running a little heavier, quite honestly, than Garuda, but what you also got to take into account is that I'm running OBS in the background, which is using right at 600 megs. So if you drop that off at rest, we'll probably be hovering around 1.1, 1.2 gigabytes, which to me is just fine. Now I know there's going to be people out there that just lose their mind. 1.2 gigabytes at rest? Jesus! No, you don't got to worry about it here. So what we're going to do now is I've got OBS set up. So what do we got to do to install applications? What are we going to, what are we going to do here? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip on over and we're going to look up software. Oh, okay. Timeout. No, I've got to change this up. I don't like the little menu. So let's uh, go ahead and show alternatives. Application launcher. I think I want to go with the big one. Why not? So that way it's easy for y'all to see. So we'll open that up. So we'll go to the YAS software center. And I actually want to go ahead and click on that. I need to pin that down here. Let's go ahead and put in our password. And we need to go ahead and get some applications. And it refreshed itself right off the bat. So I'm going to go ahead and see if they've got GIMP, which we know they do because we did a search on it a while ago. So I'm going to go ahead and check on GIMP. And then I'm going to go with Caden Live. Let's go ahead and do a search. There's Caden Live. I want to see if they have clip grab too because I use that sometimes if I have some issues with some of my YouTube videos. So let's go ahead and click that for install. I know I'm forgetting something. Uh, boxes. Does it have boxes? It does have GNOME boxes. Okay, so I'll go ahead and click on boxes. And let's accept. So I guess this is everything that's going to install. So let's go ahead and continue and let's see how long this might take. And I'm hoping I saved all those selections. I hope I didn't need to accept every single one. Knowing me, I probably messed something up there, but it's showing you right here. It's 279.4 megabytes that it needs to download. Now, while we're doing that, let's go ahead and minimize this. I want to go ahead and zip on over to settings and I want to go down to about this system. Uh, as you can see right here, uh, Lenovo, IdeaPad. I don't know why it's showing IdeaPad because I do have the little knob. It is a ThinkPad. But anyway, I'm running 8 gigabytes of RAM. We're running uh, KDE Plasma 5.2, And kernel version is 5.19.1-1 default. So it's not a spiced up kernel. It's not a Xanmod kernel. It's not the Zen kernel. It is your default Linux kernel. And let's go ahead and zip on up here to appearance. I want to go ahead and probably, let's see, back up. Okay, why is it not giving me, does it not give me the dark mode option right? Yeah, it does. I guess I just overlooked it, everybody. Okay, we switched it over to a dark mode. I like that much better. Let's go ahead and close that. Let's come down here. We still got a little ways to go. Let's open this up. Let's see, you've got uh, out of the box, you've got Arc, Clementine, Kate, Graphics, you've got Gwynview, Color Paint, LibreOffice, Ocular, KTorrent instead of Qubit Torrent, Thunderbird for your mail. I'll probably get rid of that. Clementine, OBS, VLC, you have LibreOffice out of the box. Settings, System Settings, Yast, System. Now I want to show you guys Yast. Let's, let's get into Yast a little bit because I think if you've never used uh, Gecko Linux or OpenSUSE as that matter of fact, that you need to understand what YAST is. YAST is like your control center. It's like where you go to take care of uh, a bunch of different issues, whether it be file system snapshots, uh, display in the system's log. Uh, you can go down here to hardware, system, network services. You got media check right here. You can verify CD and DVD media integrity. Your software management, which is what's running in the background right now, downloading our applications. And it shows right here, remaining 23 megabytes of 279. And then you've got your software repositories, which we saw just briefly at the beginning of this video. And then you've got your bootloader services manager, system config, Samba, host name. So your YAS control center is pretty much going to be where you go when you want to take care of your file snapshots, adjust network settings, uh, software repositories. If you want to go in and download Google or something like that, I believe you should be able just to go into the software manager and put Google Chrome in and it automatically pop up because it's already part of the repositories. But 
this is just somewhere you can go to take care of all those issues should you have them. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that and see where our status is right here in remaining 1.084 gigabytes. Now what it's doing right here is it's actually doing a complete update of our system on top of what we were already installing, which is definitely needed because when I first started up, it said that I needed an update, but I didn't need to do it at that point, and I just skipped over it. So we will go ahead and minimize back down here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and open up Firefox. And what's really nice is when Firefox first opens up, OpenSUSE Search is what you have on your Firefox page. And it looks like it's powered by DuckDuckGo. So we could do something like eBuzz Central. And it doesn't look like it has any ad blockers or anything up here. So if you wanted to add those, you could. Especially if you're used to Firefox, you know how easy that is. But I like that. It's got it set up right there off the bat. Now, one thing I do like to do on all of my systems, let's go to uh, some more tools, customize toolbar. I want to get rid of the title bar. I don't like title bars. I don't know why. I just think they're a waste of space. Then I want to come up here and go ahead and put a home button in there. Click on that. Click on home and it will take me back to that search. So what I'm going to do right now is we're going to pop down here and see where we're at. We've only got 500 and oh, it's almost done. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of Firefox because we're getting close there and date and time. That's pretty nice. Guys, I'm pretty impressed so far. It's pretty snappy. It's pretty quick. Uh, OBS installed pretty easily. Uh, and hopefully this software right here will install easily and obviously work without any issues let's go ahead and take a look at dolphin let's go ahead and open the dolphin file manager up all right it pops up and a couple things i want to do here real quick i want to go ahead i don't need my network showing i can hide that until i need it uh recent files let's go ahead and hide that i don't need to do a search for and then i want to make those a little bigger large okay so they switch to large let's go ahead and close out of that and Installed packages, 155. Let's finish. Now, I should be able to go over here and type in Caden Live. And it's right there. So what I'm going to do is right click it, pin it to my task manager. And then I want to look for, let's look for GIMP. There's GIMP right there. Let's go ahead and pin that to the task manager. Now, let's make sure that GIMP and everything opens up flawlessly. Let's go ahead and click on that. And it opened right up. That actually opened for a first start on a new install. That was rather quick. Let's go ahead and close out of that and Caden Live. I don't use a lot of effects. I just basically cut it and roll it and we're good to go. Let's make sure we can adjust that. Okay. So Caden Live definitely is on there. So guys, that was just a quick look at Gecko Linux. Please do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. The more likes I get keeps me in YouTube's algorithm, which means the information you just saw in this video, if it was helpful to you, it can be helpful to somebody else. And subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, we are on three separate platforms, YouTube, Utreon, and Odyssey. And you can become members on all three. On YouTube, it's only 99 cents. On Utreon, it's $2.99, and on Odyssey, it's $4. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, maybe go over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.